All right, guys, chapter four, we're going to start talking about, we're going to start talking about angles. We're going to start talking about radians versus degrees, the unit circle, all that stuff. We're starting to get into some pre-calc stuff. Um, this section, you guys will not be using a calculator for most of it. There will be some stuff that you have to use a calculator. I'll probably just put it on the test so it's all together. But for this first two sections of 4.1 and 4.2, we're not going to use a calculator. Okay, so when I look at an angle, all right, you guys are all familiar with what an angle is. An angle is determined by rotating a ray, which is a half line, about its end point. Okay, your starting position of the ray is the initial side. The ending position is the terminal side. What does it mean to be initial? It's where something what? Starts, okay. And the terminal is where it ends. Okay, perfect, all right? So think about that, guys. You have a terminal side and an initial side, where it starts, where it ends. It's joined here at the vertex. It's like the corner, the point. You guys aren't going to be naming angles, like angle ABC. You're going to have to understand the parts of an angle. When we talk about angles involving things on the unit circle, you're going to talk about angles in standard position. When they say standard position, guys, that means we always start at the positive side of the x-axis. If I look at the x-axis, which one is the positive side, the right or the left? Here's my x-axis. Where is the positive side? On the right or the left? Where are the positive numbers? On the right. Okay, so your initial side is always this right-hand side right here. That's always the starting point of your angle. The terminal side is where the angle ends, and it can go all the way around. It can go around 100 times in a circle. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the direction. But initially, your angle is always going to start on the positive side of the x-axis, the right-hand side. Everybody see that? See what I'm talking about? Okay. There's two ways that angles can be formed. You can have a positive angle or you can have a negative angle. So think about this. If we start here, right here is my positive side of my x-axis, that's my initial side, if your angle starts and goes upwards, think about up, positive, this is a positive measured angle. This is your positive measured angle, like 74 degrees, 163 degrees, 284 degrees. If your, if your angle starts here and goes downward, think down is negative, this is a negative angle. So you'd have negative 180 negative 260, something like that. The plus or minus sign tells you the direction. I want you guys to write that down. Your plus or minus sign in front of your angle measure, it tells you the direction. It tells direction, meaning you're gonna always start where? Where does the angle always start? On the positive x part, right? That's your initial side. So if you have a positive, then you start at that initial side and you go upwards around your coordinate plane. If you have a negative angle, all that means is you start there and you go downward. It's just the direction. Yeah. What is the word right after the angle symbol? Measure. <laughs> Sorry. Measure. The plus or minus in front of your angle measure tells the direction if you go up or down. All right, so let's look at this. Angles are let, yeah. In this case, you guys are not going to be dealing with angle ABC, angle DEF. They're going to use Greek letters. This is alpha. This is beta. You don't have to know the Greek alphabet. <clears throat> but just understand that that's, that's talking about an angle. If you guys, look, I want you to see here. If I start at my terminal side, right, and I'm in blue, and I go positively up this way, and I end here. Do you guys see the angle I just formed in blue? Yeah? Okay. So if I start here on the initial side and I go negatively in this direction, do you see the angle I just formed? Do you see how you end up in the same exact spot? Okay. These two angles, alpha and beta, the blue one and the red one, are called co-terminal. They share, they share initial and terminal size. They share where they started and they share where they end. What's the difference in them? One's positive, one's positive and one's, one's negative. negative. Good, but you end up in the same spot. 
So we're going to talk about co-terminal angles here in a minute. Look at this one. Ready? I'm gonna, what did I do? Alpha and blue. So here's my blue angle. Do you see that little angle that was formed right here with blue? Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go all the way around a circle one whole time and then end up here. So this is just going to be bigger than 360 degrees. Those are co-terminal angles. Everybody see what I'm talking about? Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's keep moving. We're going to figure out how to solve those in a second. Now, the measure of an angle is determined, it says, by the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side. How many degrees? Our brain is, work, we work in degrees. How many degrees are in one whole circle? 360. How many are in half a circle? 180. How many is in a quarter of a circle? 90. Okay, you guys are all familiar with that. If I say this is 90, 180, 270, and 360 or 0, correct? Well, if I go the opposite direction, this is 0. If I go negatively, this is negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and then negative 360 or 0, right? Just direction. Well, we're going to start talking in terms of radians. This is what our unit circle is based on, is radians. Radians is based on <clears throat> a ratio. This is your central angle, the one in the middle. It's based on a ratio between the radius from the central angle to the outside of the circle and what's called its arc length. We're going to talk more about radians later. We're going to talk about radians a little bit later, but that's where the whole unit circle comes from. I know you guys have seen it before. You've, some of you might have had to memorize it in Algebra 2, but where it's like pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6, that sort of thing. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> you have to. Here is how radians are, are discovered. To figure out the length of a radian, you guys aren't going to have to do that right now, but I just want you to understand. A radian is the ratio between the arc length and the radius from the central angle. This just explains. Look how many radians are in a whole circle. There's six total radians. Each radian is a little less than 60 degrees. Like if you took the unit circle and cut it into six pieces, it's 60. In a, so each radian is a little less than, than our 60. But there's six radians in whole, one whole unit circle. And that's where we get our, again, pi over 2, pi over 4. We'll talk more about that later. Okay, let's talk about quadrants. <clears throat> Everybody remember, hopefully you remember, because this is going to be really important. Quadrant one, top right hand, this is quadrant one. And we go in the shape of a C. You guys ever hear that? Okay, but quadrant one is top right, quadrant two is top left, quadrant three is bottom left, and quadrant four is bottom right. 90 degrees is the same as pi over two. Pi is the same as 180 degrees. 3 pi over 2 is the same as 270. And 0 and 2 pi are the same. This would be 0 and 360. You guys need to memorize that. You need to get that in your minds. If I say pi over 2, that's 90 degrees. If I say pi, that's 180. That's half. If one whole circle is 2 pi, then half of a circle is how much? 1 pi. A quarter of it would be pi over 2. We cut it in. This is pi over 2. This is 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. That's how it's cut up. And we're going to talk more about this, I promise. Just, this, today we're just kind of introducing. All right. Two angles are coterminal when they share the same initial and terminal sides. I just drew that for you guys. Same initial and terminal sides. What changes is the direction or how many times you go around a circle. So if you are asked to find coterminal angles, coterminal angles, you are going to add and subtract 2 pi. To find coterminal, you're going to add or subtract 2 pi. How much is 2 pi? It's 360 degrees. It's one whole, a whole circle. Hi. So what you're doing, guys, is you're adding circles. You're adding whole circles. You're subtracting a circle. You're adding a circle. You're going to take an angle measure, and you're going to add one whole circle to it, end up at the exact same spot. This is all we're doing. You're just adding and subtracting one whole circle. You could add and subtract 17 circles, get a new angle measure, but be in the exact same spot. It's just a little bigger or smaller. So if you're given an angle measure like this, 13 pi over 6, 
All right. If you're giving it in degrees, it's really easy. You add and subtract 360. It's a little bit harder when we have pi, be in, when you're in terms of pi, because you have to get a common denominator and stuff. But you're going to find coterminal angles. We're going to add 2 pi, and we're going to subtract 2 pi. And you have to pay attention to how the question is asked. Sometimes it asks you to just find two coterminals. Sometimes it asks you to find one positive and one negative. You guys could have varying answers because some of you could add 2 pi three times. Some of you could add 2 pi five times. Easiest is just to do one if you need to. But if I was going to, up here, the top one, I'm going to add 2 pi. Can I just add the way it is? You have to get a common what? Common denominator. What's a common denominator between... 6 and 1. 6. So if I multiply the bottom by 6, I have to multiply the top by 6, right? So what's 2 times 6? 12. So when I add this together, 13 plus 12 gives me 25 pi over 6, all right? That is a coterminal angle. It's saying I was at 13 pi over 6, I added one whole circle, and I'm back to the same spot, but I have a different measurement. So the same thing here, if I'm going to subtract, well, I need a common denominator. So this becomes 6, this becomes 12. What's 12 pi minus, sorry, 13 pi minus 12 pi? Pi over 6. All right, now if the question just asks you for two coterminal angles, that's fine. But if the question asks you for one positive and one negative, what do you notice about both of these? They're both positive. How do you think I would figure out what a negative coterminal was? Subtract 2 pi again. Perfect. I'm just going to say, okay, well, I'm going to subtract another 2 pi because I did not get a negative answer. Mm -hmm. Sure. So what is my common denominator again between 6 and 1? 6. This becomes 12. So what's 1 pi minus 12 pi? Negative 11 pi over 6. There's my negative. There's my positive. All right. If they just ask you for 2, whatever you need, that's fine. But if they ask you for one positive, one negative, you keep adding until you get a positive number, you keep subtracting until you get a negative one. Does that make sense? Yeah. And if they ask, like, for two, does it have to be, sorry, for, does it have to be two, does it have to be negative? You can still do a positive and yeah. a negative, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's look at this. Let's just say we're given three pi over four, right? Three pi over four. I want one positive and one negative coterminal. Coterminal means we start one spot. We go one whole circle around and we end up at the same spot. So depending upon the direction, if I go positively, I would be adding. If I go negatively, I'm doing what? Subtracting. Good. So if I subtract, or let's add. Let's add 2 pi here. First thing I need to get is a common denominator. So this would be 4. This would be 8. You guys agree? Ooh, bad color choice. So what is 3 pi plus 8 pi? 11 pi over 4. Is that a positive? Yep. So that's good. So now I want a negative. So I'm going to take 3 pi over 4, and I'm going to subtract 2 pi. Again, common denominator is 4. So this up here, I knew it meant becomes 8. So what's 3 pi minus 8 pi? Negative 5 pi over 4. Is that a negative angle? Then you guys are good. For our positive and negatives, guys, you might get something that's like, huge. Let me see if we have an example like that. If not, I'll give you one. All right, this is a good example. Let's look at this. This is your given angle. Negative 2 pi over 3. Negative 2 pi over 3. What does that mean? Negative 2 pi over 3. It means I start on the initial side and I go which direction? Down. I'm just going to go down. Negative just means the direction you go from the initial side, which is the positive part of the x-axis. So negative means I go in the downward direction. So if I want to find a positive, I'm going to add 2 pi. Common denominator between 3 and 1? 3. So this is going to become 6. So negative 2 plus 6 gives me 4 pi over 3. Perfect. Is that positive? Awesome. All right. Now I'm going to find a negative to this angle. I know it's already negative, but I want a coterminal. So I'm going to subtract 2 pi. So this becomes a 3. This becomes a 6. What's negative 2 minus 6? Negative 8 pi over 3. Do I now have one positive and one negative? Yes. yes. 
So just say you were given the angle measure, I don't know, uh, 18 pi over 5, right? I want one positive, one negative. Well, if I add 2 pi to this, what's my common denominator? 5. five. So this becomes a 5, this becomes a 10. Agreed? So 28 pi over 5. Okay, that's a positive. Perfect. So if I want a negative, I have 18 pi over 5, and I'm going to subtract 2 pi over 1. Well, common denominator. What is it? 5. Okay, this becomes 10. So what's 18 minus 10? So 8 pi over 5. Guys, is that a negative coterminal? No. Could I use that as a positive coterminal? Sure. Web assign will take that as a positive 100%. But that's not the, a negative measure. I need one of each. So what do I need to do? Subtract what? 2 pi again. Again, your common denominator is going to be 5. So this becomes 10. What's 8 minus 10? Negative 2 pi over 5. So this is your negative. But sometimes you might start off with a negative and you add 2 pi to it. It's still negative. You just keep adding until you get a positive one. But if you add 2 pi and it's still negative, you can count that as your negative coterminal. Or you could just subtract. There's a million different answers. Because what you're doing when you add and subtract 2 pi is you're going around the circle one whole time. You're ending up at the same place, but your angle measure is a little different. Does that make sense? Okay, we'll stop there. I'll finish the rest tomorrow. <clears throat> you guys can start your web assign for some things. Um, I'll look at it. Make sure the problems are, are good, whatever, and we're going to make it due on Friday.